Welcome to Philippines Discovery. Lisa here, your honorary Filipina. Today we're going to take a look at the art scene, dance, and music in particular. Despite the wide reach of Filipino artists, it's hard to pinpoint a particular filming style, musical beat, or English language writing technique that clearly says, this is Filipino. Because so much has been influenced by Spanish, American, and Muslim cultures. Filipino stars often train overseas or become famous because of exposure outside of the Philippines. The first Filipino artist to achieve international recognition was Juan Luna. He was a renowned painter. He won a gold medal in Madrid in 1884. Today, Filipinos love to dance and sing. Whatever's on the top 40 charts abroad quickly gathers steam in the Philippines. Rizal Park in Manila has become a popular venue for the activity of ballroom dancing. It has become a phenomenon and they use open air areas like this particular park. More recently, the country has pushed onto the world hip-hop stage, but traditional dance written and choreographed by Filipinos can still be seen. Lisa Elizalde is the country's best-known classical ballerina. She made a name for herself in Russia in 1984. As seen here on the more traditional side, performers of the Muslim dance called Singkel carry two large glided fans and dress to exude wealth and privilege. The female performers approach attendants carrying bamboo poles and dance between the moving staffs. Filipinos love karaoke and they are known for being good singers. They have won many international singing competitions. In the southernmost part of Mindanao lies Lake Cebu, surrounded by rolling highlands and mountains. This is where the Tibuli people live and produce the much sought after tinalak cloth. Made from pounded bark, the weave is a striking blend of primary colors. When sewn into traditional attire, the cloth is a perfect foil for the beautiful ethnic accessories worn by the Tiboli women. But as the big cities beckon, young tribal people, including Tiboli women, are lured by urban jobs and lifestyles. Filipino crafts are often on display at the numerous festivals, such as the colorful mask at the Mascara Festival that takes place in Bacolod every October. The Philippines' guitar-making industry is centered on Mactan Island, just off the coast at Cebu City. Visitors can watch the local craftsmen at work or be entertained by a quality control expert trying out a newly made guitar. Traditional music lives on in the Philippines despite their pervasive influences of the outside world. Music of the indigenous and Muslim groups is still being composed, for example, for brass or bamboo percussion instruments. Attractive ceramic jars known as Bernay are made in and around the Ilocos region of northern Luzon. They are designed for storing vinegar, fermented fish paste, local wine, and water. The best range of crafts is found in Manila, in Armita, Makati, and the Quiapo area, and also in specialty shops or malls, including those inside tribal-themed villages open to the public. Mm -hmm. 
Filipinos are enthusiastic about many sports, notably basketball. Perhaps unexpectedly for an outsider imagining something more indigenous, basketball is the national passion. Indeed, inch for inch, Filipinos are among the best players in the world, and the sport is marked by year-round amateur and professional tournaments. Manila was the first Asian city to establish a professional league in 1976. But really, the Philippines as a whole, if you look around, you will see art, art in nature, art in the way the rocks are shaped. You see art in the water, the reflection of the clouds on the water, the clouds themselves, the artistry of the rice terraces, you see art. The combination of blues and greens in the Philippines is amazing. You see art. The geometric shapes of the chocolate hills, you see art. I will see you next time on Philippines Discovery as we take a look at a waterfall in beautiful Mindanao.